of the Most High. We shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him shall we trust. Surely He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from every perilous pestilence. He will cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, upon the young lion and the serpent shall we trample under our feet. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us up on high because we have known his name. We will call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're glad to be in church, come on, give Jesus some round of applause. He's worthy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's a privilege to see the first Sunday in the month of March. And I don't know about you, but it's about time I take it back. Everything that the devil has told me. I'm talking my health. I'm talking my finances. Everything. Lift your right hand to the heaven and say, Lord, I'm taking it back. Go. Woo! Let's go.
Hallelujah. That amen was for us in this hall. I want us to do an amen for God, an amen for Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. We're going to be praying now. If you'll be upstanding, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to take two, three prayers for our country, our local assembly, and ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. This is our month of supernatural intervention. Amen. And the Lord is doing mighty things in our midst, in Jesus' mighty name. If you have a testimony, can I see your hand up? Amen. We all will have testimonies in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord this morning. We bless the Lord, the God of heaven and earth. The I am that I am. Let's call him by his names. The I am that I am. Lord God Almighty, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of all flesh the God of all possibilities, the God of Bethel. Praise his holy name. 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 This is a good place for us to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for the first three months of this year. Hallelujah. Thank God for his mercy, new every day. Thank God for his supernatural intervention in our lives. Thank God for our families. Thank God for your spouse. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your siblings. Thank God for your friends. Thank God for your colleagues. Thank God you have a job. Thank God you are in school. Thank God your fees are being paid. Thank God. Just thank God. Even if these things are not happening, thank him in advance because he's set to supernaturally intervene in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray. Just thank God. Great place to thank God. Father, we just thank you. King of glory, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. Bless your holy name. In Esther, in chapter 8, verses 15 to 17, the Jews had light and gladness, joy and honor, joy and gladness. They had a feast and a holiday. It is our time for joy. It is our time for gladness. Thank God for joy this morning. Thank God for gladness this morning. Thank God for Nigeria. Thank God that our country will be joyful. Our country will be glad. Amen. We will rejoice in Nigeria. It is the only country we have. Hallelujah. So let us bless God for it. Let us ask God to show mercy to his chosen city. To show mercy to Nigeria. Not because we deserve it, but because of your great kindness, O oh Lord. Show mercy on over Nigeria, Lord. Pray for Nigeria now. Ask God for mercy. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Speak peace over Nigeria. Speak peace over Nigeria. Just as Jerusalem is, pro is protected by the mountains on every side, the Lord will protect us in Nigeria. The Lord will protect us in Nigeria. In the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for our president. Pray for all the arms of government for wisdom, for courage, for the love of God to direct all their, all their de deliberations, to direct all their actions in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for our governor in Lagos that the Lord will continue to grant him courage, wisdom, and speed to do that which he's doing. Pray for our country. Pray, pray that the Lord will indeed have mercy. Peace over Nigeria. Peace over Nigeria. Peace over Nigeria. All these horrible things that we are witnessing, armed banditry, kidnapping, the Lord will rout them in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak an end to this crisis. We speak an end to insecurity in our country. We ask for courage for our armed forces. We ask for wisdom. We ask, Lord, that you bless our country in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray at this point for the body of Christ. Hallelujah, that the gates of hell will not prevail over the body in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for the church. Pray that it will take its place in the mighty name of Jesus. The church of Christ will take its place in the mighty name of Jesus. It will take its place in the committee of nations. It will take its place. It will speak forth truth even to power 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Pray for the leaders of, our, of the body. Pray for all the leaders. Pray for them. Ask God for unity, for purity, for wisdom, for courage, for the fear of God. God's glory will manifest in, our might, in God's mighty name. Amen. Let us pray briefly for our local assembly. Let us pray for our pastor, Pastor Taiwo, Pastor Nomti, their children, all our pastors. Please pray, pray. Lift up your voices and pray. Pray for our church. Pray for this local assembly. Pray for the youth, the church pastors, our pastors in diaspora, all our branches, all our departments. Pray, pray, all our workers, every single member and family that is represented in the fountain of life church that the mighty hand of the lord will be upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of jesus pray for the children's church our children shall be for signs and wonders even to his glory in the mighty name of jesus pray for yourselves even now pray for your personal needs i join my faith with yours that the lord will grant you each and every one of us the desires of our heart in the mighty name of jesus May the Lord bless each and every one of us indeed. May the Lord favor us. May the Lord grant us wisdom. May the Lord increase us. May the Lord make us fruitful. Deliver us from all our troubles. And grant us peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can I have a big amen? Amen. As we are praying, somebody sneaked in. Do you know who? Hallelujah. Welcome, sir. Put those hands together for the Lord. Our pastor is back. Hallelujah. Business and Vocational School holds a special program for entrepreneurs. Welcome to this edition of Fountain News. I am Iboro Toye Edit. It's another month. The usual prayer and fasting starts today and will be rounded off on Zoom webinar this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Meeting ID is 922-4683-5914, while the passcode is TFOLC at 123. You may join the service on our YouTube channel, Fountain TV. Please tell your friends and loved ones about it. Now, is your business struggling? Has your profit margin dipped as a result of the COVID-19 crisis? Are you thinking of closing down your business? The truth is businesses are facing huge challenges as a result of the current global health and economic crisis. In the light of this, Great Springs Business and Vocational School has designed a two-week special entrepreneurship toolkit specially for you. Focus areas will include finance, human resource management, social media and branding, and business diagnostics and ethics. At the program, business owners will have the opportunity of attending sessions with seasoned professionals on evaluating, reinventing, and repositioning their brands for maximum growth. The sessions will run from Monday, March 15 to Friday, March 26. Time is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The sessions will be both on-site and online. For registration details, please call 0815-597-7387. Registration closes on March 13, that is this Saturday. Only limited spots are available, so hurry to register. The Relief Committee of this church would like to thank you for the seeds of prayers and donations sown into the Vineyard Project so far. The committee would like to remind you that the webinar prayers on Thursdays are usually dedicated to our persecuted brethren, so make it a date. Now, did you invest in the Business Fellowship Stanbic IBTC Investment Fund? Please contact Sister Lara on 0803-392-5818 for some important information. The Outreach Department would like to remind us not to relent in our soul-winning efforts. 
We can always reach out to friends and family through our various social media platforms and win a soul for Christ. God bless you as you do. In other announcements, Children's Church holds both on-site and online today. Home Fellowship continues online this evening at 6 o'clock. Single Fellowship holds on-site tomorrow at 6 p.m. The weekly Bible study continues this Tuesday at 6 p.m. while prayer meeting holds immediately after the Bible study. And shower service continues on-site and online this Thursday at 9 a.m. Remember to stay safe, maintain social distancing, use your nose mask, and wash your hands regularly. Thanks for watching this edition of Fountain News. To watch it all over again, please visit www.tfolc.org. Now, if your birthday or wedding anniversary was last week or is today, please rise for recognition. Can we give it to Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. Once again, good morning, sir. Clap for Jesus one more time. Good morning, church. Can we pray for the celebrants? If today's your wedding anniversary or the past one week anniversary of birthday, they just wait to Jesus. Amen. Lord, we thank for these precious people as they celebrate their birthday and anniversary this week and today. We pray for your unusual blessings on their lives in Jesus' name. Father, fight their battles for them. Give them peace. Do for them what they can never imagine. And let your name always be glorified in their lives. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. An announcement here for us all. If you have an, an anointing service related testimony, which you would like to share, please see Pastor Lara after the service. Anointing, the past anointing service related testimonies. Please see Pastor Lara after the service. Praise the Lord. Let your testimony be a blessing to somebody. Because tomorrow, Tuesday, anointing service, we all will have testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Now it's time for our promise for the week. Can you please open our back to Exodus 34, verse 10? Amen. Exodus 34, verse 10. I love that scripture. If I did shout, praise the Lord. He said, and he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all your people, I will do marvels, such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that the Lord will do with you. Do you like that? If you don't mind, can you please stop standing as we take it one more time? And he said, who is talking to us this morning. So we can say, and God is saying to Beodu Shodiru this morning, Behold, I make a covenant before all your people. I will do marvels. Such have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. And all the people among whom I am shall see the work of the Lord. For it is an awesome thing that the Lord will do with me. It is an awesome thing. It is an awesome thing that the Lord will do with me. Who is talking here? Who is talking here? God, the one can, that cannot lie. He has never lied before. And it's not about to lie. If God says it, no God does not waste words. He said, I make a covenant. It will be so big that everyone in your circle will see it that nations of the earth will see it, that generations will see it, that books shall be written as a result of what I will do in your life. In the name of Jesus. God is saying your testimony shall be noise abroad. And all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord. For it is an awesome thing that the Lord will do. Say I receive it. 
just receive it. Receive it. Cabros, I receive it. Receive it. Lake, just receive it in your spirit. If he says it, he will do it. It does not lie. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will do an unusual, incredible, or something. In our lives, in our family, or something. Incredible thing. All something in the lives of our pastors, all something in the life of every family, home and abroad, all something in Nigeria, all something this week, all something. We can as well call it awesome week, awesome month. Another awesome year, awesome life. Full of awe. Lady with signs, wonders, and testimony. Pray it like you mean it. It's a love letter direct, directly to you this week. Father, we receive it. This is our master key for this week. He said, Behold, I make a covenant. And when God makes a covenant, you fulfill it. He said, I will, before all your people, I will do marvels. Just such have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation. He said, designer testimonies. Eyes have not seen it. Ears have not heard it. It has not entered the heart of man. What well, God is cooking for me. I receive it. I possess it. I thank God for it. Can we give God a clap of ring? Like we really, really, really do mean business. Can we give it to Jesus? Can we give it to Jesus? We receive it. And we thank God for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is about to do an awesome thing with somebody. You know, sometimes words just come and we just let it fly. I would never forget this statement by our robots. He said, your miracles are always walking towards you. In some cases, they are running towards you. Do you know that if you are not expecting them, tendency is that they just run past. That's not you. Come on, say awesome. awesome. Uh -uh, I can't hear you. Say awesome. awesome. The Lord is doing an awesome thing with me this day, this week, this month, this year. Shout awesome. Awesome. Awesome! Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' name. Just lift your two hands up. It says, Great is thy faithfulness. Oh Lord. There is no shadow of time with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions there as thou hast been and for me. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy Oh, 
also. He did it before. He will do it again. He's doing it right now. He's too faithful. His name is faithful. I say his name is faithful. His name is faithful. Come on, give him a big shout in the house. Hallelujah. Let me tell someone here this morning. This is an unusual day for you. In the name of Jesus. I, we missed you. Seriously. We missed you. But literally, in fact, I would say in every service we were present. Only that you didn't know we were present. You can't be on holiday and be on holidays from the presence of God. Oh, no, it's not possible. And our pastors were wonderful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, no. Oh, no. You are not appreciating them. Come on. Every one of them was uniquely wonderful. Come on, give, give the judge a good clap offering. A good clap offering. Appreciate every pastor. Every pastor. Every pastor. Glory be to God in the highest. Every pastor. Every pastor. Even the one that came up to just say, let us pray. Had a word of encouragement. Come on, appreciate our pastor so much. I want you to help me specially celebrate Pastor Fred. <laughs> Pastor Fred. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Fred is a leader. God bless Pastor Fred. God fights his battles. Yes, always come through for him. In the name of Jesus. Yes, where is Pastor Numpty? We were about some businesses abroad. Okay, no, don't let me say business. Don't say business. We were about some assignments abroad, and we didn't conclude. So she's still manning them. Very soon, just like I appear, you see her appear. <laughs> Amen. I think I took that from Pastor Fred. Glory be to God in the highest. I realize, ladies and gentlemen, that the best approach to God. Is praise and worship. Let me say it again. The best approach to God is praise and worship. But I realize that your praise is a reflection of your intimacy. So is your worship. It's how close you are in your heart that reflects. In fact, that's what spurs you to worship. Because you can be close to him and not worship. When you're close to him, he takes your total attention. The closer you get, the more there is nothing left for nothing for anything. Your bad people has a I don't know what to call it. It's something they call a taboo. I was told that kings don't like to carry children. So you don't carry children to a king. Why? Because children have... <laughs> Initially, he may be attracted by the beads and the crown. The next second, he's turned away, attracted by something else. But in the presence of the king, all attention must be him. And that's why even before you enter, you are already bowing down. Some will not just for say they will twist this way. Some will roll on the floor and the king takes everything in. In the presence of God, nothing else matters. Did you hear me? I mean, nothing else matters. He's here. Let me announce it. He is right now. Lift up your hands and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Begin to say good things to him. Begin to offer good things from your heart. 
begins to speak good things, begins to say good things to him, begins to tell him how you have found him and how worthy he is. He's worthy. You are worthy. Come on, worship him, worship him. Forget any man, any woman around. Just worship him. Nothing else matters. We worship you, Lord. Aro raba shatari boro bagari la 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 la. Marikote ni mire 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 Worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Let him flow from the heart. Market the love for the book of 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 Just worship him, worship him. Forget any man. Hallelujah. Forget any woman. Just give him praise. Just worship him, 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 hallelujah. May rainbow to rain, may rain, my cousin. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Yes. See how you set me free. You are the living God. There's no one like you. See what you've done for me. Maraba. See how you deliver. You are the living God of oh. hey. Is there no one like you? Echo a man Echo a man Echo a man Echo a man You are the living God of oh.
Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Quiet remain. This morning I've come to just remind you. Paul says for me to say the same thing over and over again. It's not a problem at all. It is safe for you. It is safe for us. And I've come to realize that in the kingdom you say it until it is established. Did you hear me? You continue to say it until it manifests. And that's why this morning I've just come to remind you and to remind us there is nothing and there is no, no to look up with you I I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. There is nothing, and there is no one to come down. No, I I take pleasure in I said, there is nothing, and there is no to
His name. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Holy Lord. We magnify your name. Holy Lord. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Holy Lord. We magnify your name. We magnify your name. Holy Lord. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated. Let me repeat that God is about to do an awesome thing with somebody's life. And before you go here this morning, he assured you. Now, soon we catch up with your promise. Today's promise is for you. And you know it. Others are still wondering. But there is someone who knows that this is my month. This is my week. It begins today. If you are that one, let your hallelujah be the loudest. I can hear you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Glory be to God in the highest. Now, I would like you to please display the scriptures on this for me so I can read. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, I want to talk on, well, let's turn in our Bible to Ephesians in chapter 6. That's a good way to start. Ephesians chapter 6. Hallelujah. I'll read from verse 10. So I depend on you. That is what you display on this. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So put on the whole armor, the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, hallelujah, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore. Somebody shout, stand. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I say, shout it like a minute. Say, stand, therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith with which you'll be able to quench all. Somebody say, all. Come on, I can hear you. All, all the fairy darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I stop there. Praise the Lord. I say praise Jehovah. Amen. Now, I'm just starting from where I left it, if you remember. I read more in the book of Ephesians before we traveled. It hasn't left me. Every time I had to meditate on the scriptures, the Holy Ghost always drew me back there. Paul had an unusual revelation. The mysteries that the prophets struggled to see. The Bible said they were peeping, they were kind of lingering to see. which they really could not see in full. They just were in the fringes all through. That's so much so that even when Jesus came, some didn't even understand who he was. Thank God for John the Baptist. And of course, the disciples, the apostles that he chose, disciples that became apostles, thank God for all the revelations they got of him. But you will agree with me that even up to the cross, they didn't fully know him. And even after the cross, some still doubted him. Yeah, that's human. And that's why I'm saying, I just want to remind us this morning. And some will say, there's nothing new in it, but 
come on i never knew i could get jolted up and thrown into my destiny like this i am assuring you in the name of jesus there's nothing new in the word of god there's no new revelation everything that needs to be revealed that will reveal it it can only be revealed to your heart what has been revealed i know what that does when that happens he brings you in sync with the spirit let me use some physical terms he brings you in harmony with the waves of god when the revealed word becomes revealed to your consciousness you flow at the same level with god at that point no devil no creature But you see, Paul was given an unusual revelation of the person, the mission, and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if anything, he showed us what he came to do, and concluding it, he came to bring us in. He came to make us sons of the kingdom that God did from the beginning, that God established on earth, that man lost. So when we talk recovery, we are not just saying, do the catch-up game. No. The entire ministry of Jesus is recovering what was lost. And except as you begin to have a revelation of the personal ministry of Jesus, you may not recover all. But I'm here to tell someone that in your lifetime, you will recover all. I say in the name of Jesus, you will recover all. Say, I am recovering all. In the name of Jesus. And that's why he will start straight after the greetings. The first thing he will say, thanking God for what? That he has blessed Taiwo with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Now, if Taiwo doesn't catch anything in the book of Ephesians, but that, that's enough. So Taiwo here, you have been blessed not by man not by the devil you have been blessed by god the creator of the universe with all spiritual blessings with every blessing that you will ever need for your life for your assignment tayo 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 hear me you are blessed that's what he started with And then you're going to explain how you came to that place. The rest is explaining how you got there. And now it's explaining the ministry of Jesus Christ. Paul will talk and talk and talk and break out into prayer. I'm sorry, broke out into prayers. You know why he did that? He said, Therefore, I, since the day I heard that you are now a Christian, I cease not to thank God for your life. And I cease not to pray that God will grant you a spirit of revelation why he's been telling you all that you now are and how he is going about doing it and he will stop in between and just continue to pray of what use is the work of christ if i will not have a revelation of who he has made me and what he has made me 
but he did not die in vain. You know, he really didn't have to die. He really didn't have to die. He really didn't have to die. Oh, but he did. <laughs> he loves you. He loves Taiwan. So he died for you and me. He really did. I'm glad. So you begin to pray that God will grant time who is now born again the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that Taiwan could really see and appreciate what Jesus has done for him and begin to appropriate what Jesus has done for him. So he went on and on. Thank God for the book of Ephesians. And so he went on and on. By the time we get to Ephesians chapter 3 again, he said, Ha! Ah. Started praying again. That according to his riches and glory, you will be strengthened with might in your inner man, Taiwo, by the Holy Spirit. Oh! <laughs> that Christ may dwell fully in you, food abide. Hey! It's beyond give me water, give me food, give me health. Christ will dwell in your heart by faith so that you can begin to appreciate all the dimensions of the love of God to begin to know that there is nothing and there is no way that love does not penetrate and there is no, no part of creation where it is ineffective and that love flows from your stomach from your inner being So he continued until he got to chapter 6. By that, then he had, he, he, he had started the application of all the wonderful things that God has done for us in Christ Jesus. I mean, began to talk to us about the application. Let it affect your relationships. Come on, more than anything. If you can't sit there, your relationship first with God, of course, you don't need to be taught that. That was the reason of his prayer. And if truly you have anything in that direction, your, your relationship with man. And they mentioned all kinds of relationships. Then in chapter 6, in verse 10, you want to go back there for me? Finally! concluding all he's been saying and how you can be the best for it. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power. I realize when God begins to tell you to be strong is because you have the capacity. And because you have the capacity and you see, in spite of the fact that you have what it takes you are at the point of seemingly being overwhelmed. And he that sees everything knows. He said, this is who you are. But I see that there are pressures. Be strong. Be who you are. I won't demand that you be what I've not made you. He reminded me of late again. So when you stand, those I call to listen are leaders. I'm not just talking leaders in the marketplace. Of course, we have many of them. Thank God for that. They're leaders in every sense of it. 
one sure sign of leadership is he's selfless. So he said, be strong. So let me use a word for that place. You will need courage. Though you have been made this, though you have been given this, you will need courage. And the vivid example was what he said to Joshua. Joshua, you saw the way I dealt with Moses. You saw how awesome Moses was. Who was the person who could stand against Moses? No. Joshua, the same way I'm dealing with you now. But Joshua, listen to me. Be strong. Get up. You have what it takes. But you take courage. The Lord just said to me that somebody is listening to this message and you're defining a new beginning. And I say congratulations in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So he said, finally, have you said this much? Have you known this much about yourself? Your capacity and your capabilities. Hear me. Be strong. You'll be surprised at the tiny thing that can shake the strongest. You'll be surprised at the little, little tiny word that can make some people rattle. And you begin to wonder, ah, what's wrong with her? What is wrong with him? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Because they are all yours. They are all yours. They are available to you. He says, I'm praying that you have a revelation of the greatness, of the awesomeness of his power towards you. It's the same power that he used to raise Christ from the dead. So be strong in this power. Be strong. This is yours. But hey, be strong. What does that mean to you? Take it and use it. Don't give up. It's yours. Hallelujah. Now go on, go on, go on quickly. I've yet to get into what I'm saying. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Please watch that word. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? Against the wiles of the devil. Go on. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against which are hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, 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 take up the whole armor of God that may be able to what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And having shot a few with pressure of peace, go ahead. Above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench the fairy death of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation the, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all supplications in the spirit, being watchful to this end and with perseverance and supplications for all the saints. And for me, this is, this is okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, for which I'm ambassador. Yes, 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 go ahead. But also that you also will know my fears and how long I... Okay, this is where I'm going. The whole essence of the armor, the whole essence of all the tools of war is for one reason, is for you to stand. Jefferson Fawcett and Brown says, the expectation of God of the soldiers of the cross, of the soldiers of the gospel, of the sons of God, is to be able to stand. What does that tell you? That means that the fight you are fighting is not just a fight of let me grab. No, 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 no. The fight you are fighting particularly is the fight of the devil cannot take what is mine. 
But that is if you already know who you are and what you have. The Bible says even a king, if he's a child, if we are not careful, even the slave will control the, the king. The Bible says, Romans 5, 17, 17 rather, because we have come to know the grace of God, we who were slaves and controlled before are now kings in the kingdom of God. The abomination of our time is that kings are walking around like slaves. And you know why? Because the devil has tricks. To be able to stand against the wires, the cunning methods, the tricks of the devil, your own is to stand. I wrote there, here, it says, do you know that, whew, I don't want to beat myself, I want to, to come systematically, but I know I have to rush now. So all we are asked to do is stand. And the Bible says, haven't all ought to stand? He said, what? Stand, therefore. Somebody shout, amen. amen. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. The knowledge of who you are and what you have launches you ahead. You don't need to do anything. Just know. That's why the Bible says, from the lips of Jesus, you will know the truth. It will save you from every domination and oppression of the devil. You will mount up faster than anything when you know the truth. Daniel said it. They that know their God shall be strong and they will do exploits. You've got to know it for yourself. But it is this knowledge that the devil fights. No, let me just quickly begin to rush to where I am. I really want to take, take me back to verse 17 quickly so I can just key into what I want to say over 16. Above all, I was listening to Kenny Hagen. He said, can you see him listing all these things? Finally, he said, and he told us all we have, and he told us the kind of battle we are fighting. He now says, put on the whole, therefore put on the whole armor. He now got his thing said, above all, Say them that there's something more important there than everything that is coming, that has been coming. Let me read to you in this version. I left my Bible at home, I told Brass, if I start to get me in NKJ, <laughs> he gave me another version. Very interesting. But hear what he says in verse 17. Glory be to God in the highest. Yes, no, verse 16. 16. Hmm. It says, lift up. 16 says, above all. Here it is. Say, lift up over all the covering. Lift up over all the covering of the shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all. So what I'm trying to say is that when it is above here, it says it is a superior. Look, look, I've been talking to you. If you don't remember anything, please take this. The ones I want to say, your shield of faith, your helmet of salvation, your sword of the spirit. If that's all you remember, all the others will fall in line. Did you hear me? Above all, deck as much as you can. Don't forget this three. Hear the way the passion says it. In every battle, the battle of life, take faith as your wrap around shield for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. I am not dwelling on faith. Today I'm talking on the helmet of salvation for the next 15 minutes. We know that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Romans, sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, verse six. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will get me reading the Bible this way. Without faith, without faith, it is impossible. Ah. 
Yeah. Without faith, it is impossible. You say, what do you mean? The Bible says it's impossible to please God. I know. But my Bible tells me that when the ways of a man pleases God, even your enemy, In every battle of life, make faith your lap around. Shared. And the Lord will make us to remind me, Taiwo. See, 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 see. Remember. You will be nothing before the fact that you are surrounded. David said it better. Say, you are my shield. You are my glory. The lifter of my head. Paul said it when he was being disturbed by the powers that was. He said, but you know, it's been written according to your poets. It is said, it is in him I live. I move. I have my being. He himself said it to Prophet Isaiah, the children of Israel. He said, tell them, I am the wall of, I will be the wall of fire around them and the glory in their midst. Without faith, it is impossible. Let me continue reading it here. Now my verse 17. See the way he puts it. Embrace the power of salvation. I'm talking helmet of salvation. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect. Let me leave it because I'll give myself away quickly. Let me begin to say this. So why the helmet of salvation? Why the helmet of salvation? You know what somebody said? He said, it is the last one. He said, above all, over all this, it is the last piece of equipment that you wear. You must have dealt with everything. The belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with the gospel of peace, everything. The last thing is the helmet. It is the final manifestation of the fact that you are ready. Your preparation is concluded for battle. Helmet. You know what we use helmet for? To protect the head. Is somebody here with me? Please follow me closely because something is changing today. And it's going to be permanent in your life in the name of Jesus. I mean changing today. Glory be to God in the highest. I say, glory be to God in the highest. I'm waiting for your testimonies right now. I say, I'm waiting for your testimonies right now. Oh, I say, I'm waiting for your testimonies right now. In the name of Jesus. And funny enough, you know, the spirit knows no boundary. It can't be limited. Space and time are defined for the physical. They define the material realm. This is a microscopy of the entire realm of God. So, the helmet of salvation. The Bible there says, stick. Let me hold my note here. This thing is really far there. It's good. So, it allows me to jump properly here. Yeah. Okay. So, it says, and take the helmet of salvation. Take the helmet. Let me start with the word take. I was looking at it. I said, okay, so it's somewhere. You take it and put it. If I'm dressing, it's part of what has been supplied. Yeah. The authorities must supply me the full regalia if I'm going to fight the battle. So it must have been given. 
So take. But the Greek there didn't just say take as take. It says receive. It says accept. And that brings home what Paul was saying. For the Greek, for the Roman soldier, it's a matter of taking. You know why he would take it? Because he has come to know it as a vital part of his armor. Paul, in his original writing, says, it is yours. Accept it. He's talking faith there. Receive it. You can't take it like it means, except you have come to receive it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that as many as believed in him, to them, they will never perish, but have eternal life. The Bible says in the book of John, chapter 1, it says he came to his own, his own. He came to the world, to the world, the world. He came to his own, his own didn't know him. But as many as what? Receive. John 1 12. As many as what? Receive. As many as what? I can't hear you. It is those who receive that become. Receive the helmet of salvation. <laughs> then you become impregnable, impenetrable. You cannot be defeated. Everything about you hinges on your salvation. We are talking spiritual warfare here. Is somebody hearing me? If you are saved and you forget that you are saved, you won't be better than the unsaved. The devil will kick you like he kicks the unsaved. He will make you a slave to sin like he's making them a slave to sin. The only difference is that you are not a slave, but you are yielding yourself to be a slave. Come on, put on the helmet of salvation. I'm still coming. So, what does the helmet do us again? What does he do rather? What does he do? He protects the head. So I called the doctor. I said, So I don't want to. So please tell me if I'm correct. I said, physiologically speaking, biologically that is, the head controls the entire body. Is somebody here with me? You know why? Because the head houses the delicate organ called the brain. The brain controls every process of the body, including your heartbeat and your breathing. So when he says, look, above all, mind this once more. Cognitively, which was exactly what Paul was saying, your head controls your life. It controls your body and controls your entire life. He's been established medically and otherwise that the brain is the seat of your mind and that's why the devil's greatest attack is your mind see if we hand over the leadership of the nation to you today but you are not confident of who you are and what you have. Any rat can come and twist you and begin to use you to achieve their own aim. Your mind. You were slaves. You are now kings. It's through your mind that the devil will try to make kings slaves again. God forbid. In the name of Jesus. Your helmet of salvation. Somebody says, where the head goes, the whole body follows. Jesus put it very clearly. He says, strike the shepherd, the sheep scatters. 
I say, oh my goodness. So scatter the, scatter the shepherd. That is, knock his head. Knock him off. The sheep are gone. And so I was told from what I read that the battle of those days was such that it kept evolving. They had the javelin and they had the shield and they had the sword. That some sword, a copper sword, they can use it to pierce everything, anything. And it, it's light but heavy towards the end that they can use to hit your head. And that's why the helmet is such that it comes and it flows to the back like this and rests. There is no protection for the back at all, but there is protection for the back of the head. Is somebody hearing me? Simply put, I need to begin to close. What we are saying today is this. God did not make a mistake when he says, guard your heart with all diligence. The devil is after what you have, what God has made you. He said, Pastor, what with the things that I've lost? I will show you how it works before I stop. And God says, my heart, that it works. You hold a miracle in your hand. In the name of Jesus. And amazingly, it is you. Glory be to God in the highest. I said, glory be to God in the highest. I said, glory be to God in the highest. I'll give you a quick example. Maybe it's better to make it faster for me. I look for examples in the Old Testament. David. David had experienced God in a way and manner that very few had in his time. Not even his brothers knew the level of his experience of God. Until Samuel, the prophet, came to the house of Jesse and discovered that David was missing. Let me say this quickly. Until you come, they will never conclude. In the name of Jesus. Let me say it again. As far as your calling is concerned and your assignment, until you manifest, they will never be able to conclude. And where they think they have concluded, when you come, they will make a way for you. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling you the way it works. What God has made you can never be changed. He's a faithful God. Some say, can you walk just by mere speaking? That's the only way to do it. It works. So he got there. He knew something was amiss. Someone was absent. But he really could not articulate it. So he asked the question. Are these all of your sons? They will look for you. The things that held you back has no choice. Or rather have no choice anymore. The things have no choice anymore. The powers have no choice anymore. When the Lord says they are needed, they will give way. If they don't give way, go to Isaiah chapter 59. You see there, I think in verse 17, when he's, Jesus, I mean, God said, he, he said, I looked. That's been kind of Jesus. He said, I looked and I see nobody in the gap. I see no intercessor. There was injustice. There were killings and maiming. People were doing as if God does not exist. He said, then he brought salvation by himself. And guess what he did? That was where Paul quoted this from. He said, he put on the breastplate of righteousness. Let me read it exactly the way it is. Put me Isaiah 59, 17. Quickly, 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 quickly. I have to rush. They say, Pastor, don't come. Yes, I have come. In Jesus' name. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. Now, this was God. This was being called Jesus. Ha, ha, this is how to do it. And the helmet of salvation. Why? He will redeem the situation. 
he will salvage the situation he will reverse the lie and the decadence of the devil he put it where on his head he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak oh watch the next one according to their deed accordingly he will repay so when God's about to move uh, he puts on the blessing of the right hand and the helmet and when God wants you to move he says put on your helmet of salvation somebody says your, the knowledge, your, our knowledge that, uh, of salvation is the strongest in, uh, weapon against the devil's attack it is hallelujah so what happened to david watch this watch this quickly when david came what happened happened oh this is it so in addition to his experience with god he has been anointed hey he knew hey then he was on errand on the next in the next chapter and goliath was boasting and even the king the king got messed up in his head <laughs> Even the king got messed up, but not David. I said, not David. Somebody's not hearing me. I believe somebody's hearing me. I believe somebody whose break is about to bust is hearing me. I believe somebody whose, uh, whose victory is about to be made manifest is hearing me. Hallelujah. Even King Saul was messed up in his mind. The devil had hit his head. How? With the bragging Goliath. Hey, every Goliath in your life is coming down today. In the name of Jesus. You have what it takes. I say you have what it takes. Embrace the helmet of salvation. You have what it takes. Goliath brags. You know what he was saying? He will kill all the armies of Israel. Kill. The first opposition was a liar. He said, No, you are coming to show off. You know what? You know, you know what they were aiming at? They were aiming at his mind. Okay, now don't let them see I'm bragging. Maybe I should just take my bag and go. That was the aim of a liar's arrow or the devil's arrow to a liar. Words to discourage you. Those who never accept you for what God has made you. You don't need them. You don't need their encouragement. But their encouragement is discouragement. Those who think, is it not the son of Joseph? The son of Joseph will scatter you and throw you to hell. Not you, them. The same son of Joseph. Once he put on that, the Bible says zeal was born in him. After he left, the king said, You are not able to. You are a youth. You know what that means? His brain. His mind. He said, Sir, <laughs> let no man's heart. He knew what he was. Why would he talk of heart? Who was talking of heart? They said, Sir, your heart may be feeling you, but don't let it feel. Your heart is not feeling. I have the helmet. I know this God. I rescued the lion. I rescued the bear. I brought the kid out of the mouth of the. Hey! I'm saying he has anointed me. I will go. I will fight him. Can you see the battle? Can you see the battle? When he came out, Goliath said, Am I a dog? Look at this. They said, When he saw the size of David, he disdained him, he despised him. He belittled him. Why? 
to make him feel small. No, he knew I may be small, I may be a boy, I may be a giant, I will kill you. He knew. Now hear me. Every battle, they came to suggestions. They became thoughts in his mind. Is somebody hearing me? Hey. The Lord we serve, the God we serve, we deliver us. But even if it doesn't, hey, we will not bow. They saw the fire. The king promised them, I will roast you. But the hermit said, We know this God. He will. But even if it doesn't, we will not bow. Jesus Christ. You are my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. If you are the son of God, you think the devil stood like this to talk to him? They were taught. If you are, turn the stones to bread. You have the capacity. The world will know what you can do. They will shout. You become, uh, your story will become viral on the internet. You are billion followers. See, I'm not interested. You won't be the one to order me to do things. I don't move at the impulse of your word. You are not the one to tell me that I'm the son. I already know that I am the son. Helmet of salvation. The devil comes to trick you with what you already have. Make it look like he's the one giving you. Just to confuse your mind. This way he was preaching. He said, Jesus, the word spoke the word. Of course. That's the way to do it. Hear me again in Passion Translation. 17 verse 18. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word. Not just of the word, of the spoken word. Speak the spoken word. He now says, I'm reading verse 19 here, pray passionately in the spirit as you constantly intercede with every form of prayers. He said, now we pray with, he said, I'm praying constantly with all every kinds of prayers. But the question is, how do you know all the kinds of prayers? And then do you know when to pray what kind of prayers? But here the solution here. Pray passionately in the spirit. Romans 8, 26 says, by the time you get there, like, all these weapons, how do you launch them? Prayers? Pastor, are you saying it's only prayers that will give me, is it not my confession? Whoever told you that confession is not prayers. Confession is prayers. Come on, go look at the prayers of the, of, of the apostles in Acts chapter 4. Why do they hear the rage? The people imagine everything. They were speaking the word of God back to God and to the situation. Confession is prayers. But how do you begin to get this? How do you launch them for effectiveness? Because the truth is this. It's, one thing, it's not like you've not heard all these things before. You've heard them before. How come you are not speaking the word when you are under, when, when you are pressed? How come you are not speaking the word when you are tempted? But one thing is clear. The only way to counter thoughts in your life is words of God. You don't counter thoughts with thoughts. He says, still, you are in the store. He says, still. He says, come on, you can still, they won't see you. He says, no, I'm a child of God. I don't steal. Ken Hagen said, after God raised him up at age 16 from the deathbed, he said, for the rest of his life, he's casting a new headache. He said, on one occasion, the headache came so strong. I'm talking to somebody here now. He said, so strong. And guess what? The devil said, I thought he said, you are here. Can you see his back? And he said, this time around, you know, he said, he answered back, he said, no, devil. You are a liar. Because he himself has said, so he declared the word of God. He said he went back to bed. 
And that was it. He said on another occasion, they were changing house. And the driver now, they took him last because he could not walk. They cleared everywhere, they cleared his room last, and they brought an ambulance to pick him. As they were going through the city center, the man said, let me just take you around so that I can see. You haven't gone out in months. So he said he was peeping like that to look. Then the devil whispered to him, said, look well, because this is the last time you're going to see. He said he answered him, he said, no. I will see it again, and I will come walking on my feet to this place. I won't be carried in a car. No, I will see. You don't counter thoughts with thoughts. Thoughts are the devil's most little weapon. He suggests to you through your eyes, through your, through your ears, through what people say, through what you read, through what you taste. But when you know, when the helmet is there, he said, no. Chase that woman. Yes, yeah, she's pretty. She's somebody else's wife. And what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Thou should not covet another man's wife. I am satisfied. I'm blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. I'm a satisfied man. She's my sister. She's my daughter. You speak the word. You counter the devil. So he said, no. He said, he said no. He said, I will not die. He told him, I will leave. I will come. I will walk here. Eight months later, he walked there and stood there. He said, with tears in his eyes. He said, Satan, dog, you. you, see, you, are, you are, can't you see you are foolish? He said he was praising God. Somebody is hearing me. By next week, you'll be praising God. On account of what will begin to happen in your life. Every ground the devil thought he has taken in your life, I stand as an oracle of God. I said, no. I said, no. I said, let go. Now. In the name of Jesus. This one is blessed with every blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This one will not die, will live and declare the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. Helmet of salvation. Sit down as I close. He said, one last time he came to him. He said he was preaching somewhere. They had given him a place to stay. And the couple were staying in another room. He said in the night, he said, a kind of fever. He said the devil said to him, said, yeah. <laughs> he said, finally. This one you can't escape. You are going to die. He said he looked. He said from inside. He just started. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. The devil said, Why are you laughing? He said, I'm laughing at your folly. So you are laughing at me? I mean you are going to die. He said, look at him again. Hey, 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 hey. Ah! He said, why are you laughing? He said, I'm laughing at your lies. Uh-uh. He replied again. He said, he started laughing again. He said, he so laughed by the time that he was able to get himself together. He said, the devil was running. Listen to me. Listen to me. I wrote it down as I was preparing. Anytime he suggests a lie to you, even when it's obvious that he's winning, reject it. Number two. <laughs> Rebuff it. What do you mean? Don't give a budge. Number three. Reaffirm the promise of God. That's all. Did you hear me? I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am head, I'm not tail. In him was light, the life was the light of men, I'm the light of the world. I shine in the darkness, yeah. He's my shield, my great, the lifter of my head. The days of my life I will fulfill. I am the children God has given us who are for signs and wonders in Israel. Glory be to God in highest. So when he comes say, no, I rebuke you. Give him the word of God. Shall rise.
tell your neighbor I'm possessing my possession in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it, shout it, say it like you mean it. Say it like somebody that knows what he's saying. Glory be to God in the highest. I silence every trouble in your homes right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority. I stand where God has called me. Devil, you didn't call me. No man called me. God called me here. I take authority over every spirit of death and sickness, every spirit of chaos, every spirit of stubbornness, every spirit of wandering child, every spirit of confusion. I take authority right now. I say, Your life, I say, Stop in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in Jesus' name. I speak joy in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God in the highest. You see why he's talking that way? He assured me again and again, saying, His word in my mouth is fire. Let me say it again. I say, If in your home the problem is lack of peace, I establish peace in Jesus' name. I decree abundance in the name of Jesus. I decree healing in the name of Jesus. It's your right in the kingdom. In fact, if you are sick in your body right now, lift up your hand. I said, lift it up. Lift it up. I mean it. In the name of Jesus. I said, lift it up. I rebuke you, foul spirit of infirmity. Now, in the name of Jesus. I say, you have no right. I take authority over you. Wherever you are coming from, I spoil in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is against you. And I decree the healing power of God over that life that boy that girl that man that woman in the name of jesus because by his stripes you are healed i declare say arise and be healed in the name of jesus you know what the bible says it says healing is the children's mate but health is a covenant right you will live in perpetual health the rest of your life in jesus name the days of your life you will fulfill in jesus name Father, we give you praise. Come on, help me give him praise. Give him honor. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. The word that has gone up my mouth will not return to me. He said, won't try to be void. If I've spoken his word today, then let it be. In the name of Jesus. I'm looking for the first person to rush up here next Sunday. He said, I can't wait. This testimony can't wait. In the name of Jesus every trouble in your life every tree that God has not planted every oh, every parasite disturbing your peace, your joy your health, your life, your abundance I say in the name of Jesus the Bible says when the thief is caught, he's made to seven times I can rest you in the name of Jesus I say restore in Jesus name Woo! glory be to God in Jesus name Father we give you praise is there anybody here who has not known Jesus as the Lord and Savior? It's a matter of receiving. It's what he has given. It's up to you to receive. Salvation is threefold. Justification, sanctification, glorification. Once he forgives you, it is total. Then you become a child of God. And that sanctification that begins with justification continues the rest of your life. If you are today, you want to become to him, you belong to him. Become a king in life. Become a son in the kingdom. Will you say this after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to hear your word. Thank you for directing my steps here, for sending these people to me. Today, I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart, I receive that Jesus Christ is Son of God and the Savior of mankind. So Jesus, cleanse me from my sins and fill me with your spirit. Father, I give you all the praises. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, I pray for all the ones who have prayed that prayer in sincerity. Father, hasten the work of their growth in the name of Jesus. Send them people that will help them grow. Establish them firmly in the kingdom. Prosper them in the things of the kingdom and in things of life. In Jesus' name we pray. It's time to give our offering. If I were you, I would give the best. The best. The best. The best. The best. The best. 
Hallelujah. First, let me again appreciate all those who give their tithes, who give their offerings, who give to projects. And some of you send money to me as fresh fruits. I normally deliberately don't talk about it. But I wanted to know that because you have put your faith in God, He will surprise you this year. For every tithe, windows of heaven will never be shut over your head in Jesus' name. He will cause men to point to your bosom. Good measures, spread together, shaking together like that, running over in the name of Jesus. Hey, I don't know who you are. He said, Pastor, I didn't pray for those who have sick people at home. You said it. He stopped me. That's why I know. Where are you? If you're not here, I won't pray. The time that I didn't hear God. He said, Pastor, I didn't pray for those who are sick at home because I want him to pray concerning the situation in your home. I don't know where that is. Your... Where are you? You stopped me. You just stopped me. You are the ones. Are you brother and sister? Of two different homes? Are you from the same family? Oh, two different homes, and they are sitting together. Father, right now I take authority. I destroy the devil in that home in the name of Jesus. I say, back to sender in the name of Jesus. And for anyone who has a similar situation, I decree the healing and the breakthrough of the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Yes, let the offering be collected. Please give it with singing and dancing. Let me tell you the secret. You enter his presence with praise and thanksgiving. You leave with praise and thanksgiving. If nobody is dancing when we are giving offering, brothers, like, you stand up and do your own dance. Philama is the helmet of salvation. What I just said, the, cap, the helmet on my head is one that doesn't care what everybody is saying or thinking. It is the helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. Please give us something we can dance to. I know you play very good music though, but give us something we can dance to. Come on, go ahead. Why? I can't hear you.
past nine. Otherwise, I was just beginning to dance. But my dance continues. Your dance will never stop. In the name of Jesus. The psalmist said, the Lord I've kept always before me. He's at my right. I will never be moved. May your joy be full. In the name of Jesus. May you have every reason to always rejoice. Remember, anointing service is Tuesday. What time? 8 p.m. because it's going to be virtual. And we want to encourage those who have testimonies already. Please see. Who do they see? See Pastor Lara. Pastor Lara will be visible. She'll be here at the end of the service. Because we will have to record you. So please talk to her. Please share your testimonies. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. God bless you. Shall we share the grace? Prayer of fasting. Yes, it started already. The whole of today. So if you've taken a cup of tea, that's all right. Just join us right now. Is that all right? Oh, you are just thinking, just rush to that place and have a nice breakfast. What's Pastor saying? Uh, glory be to God in the high. End. Ah, I promised my children I'm taking them out for a meal today. Hey, yeah, let Madame take them. Or if you take them, yeah, we can take a cup of water while they're eating. All right. So today, tomorrow, and Tuesday, by the grace of God. Shall we share the grace? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow Taiwo. Shall follow you all the days of your life. And we will dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. And so sin, death, sickness will never have dominion over us. Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells where? See, helmet of salvation. The dwell where? Inside of us. And the quickens our mortal bodies to the glory of his holy name. Amen. Reject, rebuff, they are firm. Come back with testimonies in Jesus' name. God bless you.